And so if you are trying to make the NBA, you say you're going to be the second Romanian player. Second, uh, well, third, because Ernie Grunfeld was the first, but then his Amer he became an American citizen. Then George Morrison was the second, and that would be the third. Second, third, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we, we definitely wish you the best of success for, I was speaking for everyone here at AU and everyone watching you this year. You definitely have been a thrill to watch. I mean, being seeing, seeing you from the sidelines is uh, I mean, definitely a treat seeing you drop 39 against Lehigh, seeing you drop I think it's 35 against Colgate. Also, um, I guess from more of a basketball perspective, what was it like? Because uh, news last week was uh, Jim Laranega is going to Miami, Florida, and he was once your former coach. What was it like playing with him for Mason? And then what was it like playing with uh, Jeff Jones here at AU? It was very similar. Uh, coach L uh, was at Virginia, an assistant coach, and you can see that. And then clearly JJ played at Virginia, so they were very similar, which kind of made the transition a lot easier. Uh, well, I'm talking about like practice schedule and uh, the way we practice and all that kind of stuff. You know, there wasn't a ton of stuff that was very different. Uh, so it was. I think it was an easy transition, and also the guys, in, the, the guys on the team here and the coaches here made it really easy for me to adjust the stuff that I didn't know. And there was some stuff that I knew, but like the stuff that I didn't know, they really made it easy for me to uh, just pick it up really quick. All right, um, Paul from Gold Coast Australia wants to know what what sports person do you admire from other sports as an inspiration? So I guess from a non non basketball, are there any other uh, people out there? Do you sort of inspire to be like for a different sport? Absolutely. If you look at tennis player, you look at the same way Nadal works and the way he plays and the way Roger Federer carries himself off uh, you know, off off the court when he's not playing and I think those are the guys that people should choose as models. You know, uh you it, it's really important for someone to choose the right model. And you you can't just choose one guy because I think everybody's human. You know, everybody's gonna make one mistake at some point. If you choose that guy, then you might choose the right, like the wrong path when it comes to that. But if you pick, like, if you really just pick a couple of guys and you take the best parts out of them and you strive for that, I think that's that's what you want. And like I said, I think tennis players uh, they're really good as role models. Like I love watching Nadal and Federer play, and the way Federer carries himself on and off the court is, is really amazing. So are, you, are you a pretty big soccer fan? I mean, being from Europe, I'm kind of assuming this, but... Yeah. <laughs> I'd say, uh, who's your favorite team, I guess? Uh, it's, it's, been, it's been Barcelona for a long time. <laughs> yeah. I said, did you, I know growing up with a, essentially an all-basketball family, did you ever play soccer? Or yeah, I, start, I started off with soccer. I was uh, about five and a half, I think. I started off with soccer for like about a year and a half. Uh, that's when my mom was playing away from from Bucharest, or my home. Then uh, she moved back to Bucharest, and when she moved back, uh, well, we moved back, but uh, she wouldn't let me play soccer anymore because it was just it's a really big city, and she didn't like the coaches. And it's a long story. And she was like, "Do you want to pick up basketball?" And I was like, oh, "I don't know. I don't know." So. I mean, all this time I was in the gym with her every time she had practice. So I've been playing basketball since I was like three, more like one, but <laughs> kind of actually be able to dribble basketball. But uh, it was just a matter of uh, do I want to do soccer? Well, my stepdad said I'm not crazy enough to be a goalie, and I really wanted to be a goalie. That was just the only thing I really liked. Uh, so it was just a combination of all things, and I kind of picked up basketball, and uh, I was fortunate to have a really – good team around me there so I really like the guys so that really made it easy for me to just kind of go to practice every day and you know I like the coach and it was fun because it was it was competitive the first year they put us in the in the championship you know in the tournament and we got a national championship game and it was it was a lot of fun it was especially for my first year playing basketball with a team and just being organized and it was it was good to know that we got the championship the first game, you know, you want to do it again after that. So I'm sure if we would have finished last, I don't know if it was that much fun. So what's it like playing for your country, playing on a national team? Because, I mean, 
being some of my size and I'll probably never <laughs> reach that uh, goal in my life. But what's it like representing your country playing for a national team? Oh, it's great. Um, it's not just about the atmosphere. It's not just about... It's not about myself kind of playing for a national team. It's about all the other people uh, that, you know, that believe in us and that just work for their country every day. And you got to go on the floor and just represent them, represent everyone. Uh, you know, if uh, so, it, it, it's tough. I think when you lose a, a game with a national team, that's when I feel like the the world kind of just is get really heavy, and I feel on like my shoulders, and uh, it's just a it, it's it's a different feeling. You can't really compare that to any college games or uh, like pro professional basketball games because you don't really get paid for that, and uh, some guys come and do it, and uh, they kind of like walk through it and they say it's whatever. Uh, I'm not one of those guys. I take a lot of pride with the national team and uh, the fact that we won three games, three out of four games last summer, and we're in first place right now for the European Championship, uh, the qualifying round. I think that's just a great feeling compared to the year before when we lost four out of four. And I was just embarrassed. I, just, I had no idea how to get out of Romania quicker. And so. Transitioning to America, what it, what is sort of the differences you've noticed with the style of play from Europe to the States? Oh, it's huge. Uh, this, the game's a lot faster, I think. Uh, a lot less defense compared to what's going on in Europe, especially team defense. Uh, here it's kind of like, you guard your man, I'm going to guard mine, and you know if you need help, I'll get there Some, sometimes. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just how it is from what I've seen, and it's just... I feel like that's what separated the U.S. team the last World Cup, them being able to actually defend really well as a team compared to defend just one-on-one -on -one because European teams don't design plays for a player to play one-on-one. -on -one. That's very rarely. Unless you got a guy probably like Josh Childress that played in Europe, then if you got a guy that actually played in the NBA, he's really good. It comes to Europe, then you probably have a play designed for him to play one-on-one. -on -one. But that's that doesn't happen very often, and it's really a team concept. If you look at league and score in Spain, uh, in Spain league, which is pretty much the best league in Europe, he averages 17 points a game. It's J. C. Carroll, who's an American. But it's just, uh, yeah, like if you look overall, most league scorers are Americans, but none of them average like 25, 20 a game. They all average about 17, 16. That's because those countries it's a really good basketball, it's team oriented basketball. So we clearly saw that with uh, Brandon Jennings, who played in Italy. So going from about 25 in high school to I mean, roughly under 10. Yeah, it just it's the way the game's played, and probably a lot of people think Brandon Jennings had a bad year in Italy. But I think for a rookie to have a year like that in Italy, that's not bad at all on a very good team. And uh, at the same time, he had experience that I don't think he could have had in college. Especially he was a one-and-done guy, and it's not like he was going to graduate. And I think that was a smart choice. He made some money. He played on a really good team. He played in the Euro League, and I think that helped him. It's like that really good rookie year he had with with the Bucks. All right, and I guess um, yeah, I guess one more question before we take a music break and we we'll get you out of here for your <laughs> for class to finish up before you graduate. Um, what has been your most memorable moment here at AU? Um, I mean, that's tough. I think. Uh, on the court, I'm not going to forget the Lafayette game. I think that's going to stay with me. Uh, you really can't forget that. I think uh, the best moment was kind of like beating DePaul. That was my first game here. And it was just a great feeling being able to beat a Big East team, you know. But uh, I think I'm never going to be able to forget Lafayette game in the playoffs here. That's, uh, that's something I'm never going to forget, and it's definitely going to stay with me. Uh, Kind of like I was talking to uh, Coach Jones about it. It's always going to be there in the back of your mind, no matter what. And uh, he's telling about his last game, and he always, you always remember that. It's just, uh, it's tough when you you really want something that bad, and you put it all on the line, and you know it's your last chance. You know, it's just, uh, that's kind of like Larry Bird going out with loss, and I'm, I mean he hated that. He always he always talks about that, and it's just you don't want to go out that way. You want to win a championship, and I feel like though I won two championships in college, I didn't really win one. You know, it's just it's just the way the way life is. And uh 
I think that's it. It's just got to move on and do your best to get over it, but uh, you can't really forget it. <laughs> so it's just one of those yeah. things. Then off the court, I feel like uh, being just being able to graduate and uh, just moving on with your life, that's, that's a huge thing for everyone, just being able to graduate. I think nowadays days, kids don't really – it's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to come back to school later. Like, very few kids do that. And it, it's hard when you take a break to actually come back to school. And, like, I admire Vince Carter for doing that, coming back to UNC and just graduating. But most of the guys don't do it. And then you end up with guys being broke in the NBA. They have no idea what to do with their money. And when they're broke, what do they do? They still have to play in the NBDL, like Antoine Walker, for a couple thousand dollars. So you don't want to be in that situation. I think you really got to realize that. Though you might not make a million dollars a year right now, but when you get out of college, if you actually split those years and the amount you could have made, I think it's not worth it just to kind of like skip through college. So off the court, definitely getting a degree from American University is, is, is just the biggest thing for me. All right, so uh, that will do it for our interview. <laughs> and I got to say, we wish, you best, we wish you the very best of success, Vlad, going into uh, first graduating. Yeah. And then uh, whatever happens, whether they're playing in the States or playing in Europe. Uh, once again, Vlad Molovanu, American University Zone. Thank you once again for coming on to the show. And when we come back, we will definitely talk about uh, more of the NHL, uh, crazy news in the college, in college basketball world, and predictions for the rest of the playoffs and baseball news. So once again, you're listening to Fanatic Radio on WVAU.